uncertainty, and uh, you start to think, what have I done in my life? Because you are... <laughs> what have I done with my life as well? <laughs> <laughs> because you, you have been, for many years, you've been you know, living this high-octane football life, obsessed with football from a very early age. I wouldn't imagine you've had time to, to devote the amount of, uh, you know, sat down thinking about it to, to write a book like this. I, I, I wanted to show uh, two things, basically, is that uh, when you're a little boy and you have a passion, uh, life can be bigger than your dream. And I believe it's an important message to all the young people today who grow up in an uncertain world. And the second thing I wanted to share as well, uh, what I've learned from my uh, life with top-level people in top-level sport, the human lessons I've learned, what I've learned about human beings, and that human being can uh, surprise you, sometimes negatively, but as well positively, you know. And our job, basically, is to say to people, look, my life, my, my destiny depends on you, but you can do that. And so if you don't experience well to put your fate and destiny in the hands of others, you're not very happy in this job. Okay, well, we look forward to trying to get out of you tonight some of the things that you've learned. But talk about those, those young people you mentioned there. I wanted to take you right back to the start as a young boy growing up in Alsace and listening to football conversations in your parents' bistro and watching and listening other people discuss football. Is that where your passion for the game really started? And what did you learn from watching other people be so passionate about the game at such a young age? Well, I heard only uh, talk about football because the headquarters of the local club was a disastrous football team. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, so every day, I maybe as a young boy, I listened to these people and I thought subconsciously football is the only thing that matters in life. And uh, I, uh, after that, it dictated my whole life. And I always... Uh, Subconsciously, for me, it was never a choice between football and all the rest. It was always football. And uh, that's why I don't really know. I, I, I knew the intensity of my desire, of my motivation. I didn't know really where it came from. When I started to think about my life, I realized that it must certainly come from that little bistro where people were picking the team for Sunday. And uh, I was so obsessed but I took the mass book uh, to pray God to help us to win the football. <laughs> Did it work? <laughs> uh, during the games, yes. Uh, <laughs> I had my mass book and I read in Latin the mass <laughs> to beg God to help us to win the games. We didn't win many. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes then. And no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, that wasn't a reference to Arsenal. I was talking about generally. General, general faith reference there in football. Don't, don't, Arsene, don't you listen to them. All right, don't listen to them. Um, and you played a lot of football as well as a, as a young man, didn't you? And uh, one of the questions we had in tonight came from a guy called Michael who said, I think he was being slightly tongue-in-cheek, he said, Arsene, I've seen you be a wonderful manager, but were you any good at the game? So tell us a little bit about the sort of footballer you were and, and what sort of level you played to. Because you played as a, uh, you started as a midfielder, is that right? I was a midfielder, creative midfielder. Uh, <laughs> Don't forget the creative. <laughs> on the good days. <laughs> no, it, it, is, uh, it is difficult to imagine. No, I was born in 1949 in a little village uh, that was agricultural. And uh, it was all about hard work. Football was uh, on Sundays. And uh, I started only to play at the age of 12, 13 because my father created a youth team, because people told him, your son is quite good at, uh, at football. But we had no coach. My first coach was at the age of 19. And uh, somebody from uh, uh, third division saw me play and said, you're a good player, you have to come up. But I had never a coach. So I, I had my first coach at the age of 19. And then I played third division, second division, finished uh, in Strasbourg by playing a few games in the top league at the age of 29. But I was already coaching. So it, it is a, a strange career because I can't imagine that somebody has never had a coach at the age of 19 today.
can spend his life in football after. So my life is a little miracle on that front, because I had the, the luck to meet people my whole life who trusted me and gave me my boy, you have a chance, you know, I, 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 I give you a chance. And I believe that uh, life is uh, the meeting of an attitude, a passion, and as well somebody who gives you a chance. Mm. And uh, maybe uh, the rest of my life I had always that in my mind, if I can give a chance to somebody, let's do it. So that was always in your mind going forward? It was you always in my mind. Other players and, and signed other players? Today I'm ahead of a program at uh, FIFA, uh, who is basically based on that. Give every boy in the world a chance to play. Not to become a star, but to have a luck to play football with his friends and uh, enjoy it. So, first coach at sort of 18, 19, and then, you, you were, as you said, you were coaching yourself before the age of 30 while you were still playing. Who were your sort of early influences at that time? Either players that you liked to watch and enjoy watching, or people who were influencing you as a player yourself? My first influence was a man called uh, Max Hild, who was a manager. He saw me play and uh, after, he took me to the games, to international games. What I had in my whole life as a player, the managers talked always to me. Did they see something in me that uh, was passion or, or maybe some talent to analyze a game? I don't know, but uh, he was the first guy. And he encouraged me to become a manager, to become a coach. And at the age of 25, 26 already, I educated younger coaches, you know, uh, for youth teams. And I was already uh, uh, experienced to coach. I created a uh, children's school from five to seven. At the time, it didn't exist. So I was always interested in that. I don't think anyone here will be surprised to hear that um, when you read the book yourself, um, Arsene was an innovator at a very early age. So when you were starting to coach at, at Nancy around the age of sort of 30, was it, is it right you brought a dietitian into the team even, even then in, in the mid-80s? So where did that sort of influence of always trying to find how to do things better, where did that come from? Well, I, I, I believe in, uh, in my life at, at, as a coach, I mean, met two people uh, basically to make it as simple as possible. You have a guys who have an intrinsic motivation and the extrinsic motivation. The intrinsic motivation is uh, people who set themselves target, they have an internal need to push themselves. They're not necessarily happy people. They carry something that is a, a suffering inside them and uh, dissatisfaction that uh, transform into motivation. And their, their motivation comes from a desire to improve always and uh, to set themselves target and analyze what they do. When you have people who have uh, extrinsic motivation, they are basically people who are motivated by goals coming from outside. People say to them, you have to do so much in the game, and you have to do it, they do it. But the motivation comes extrinsic, from outside, exterior. Or it is financial. If you do that, you will get a big bonus, you know. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, there's many as well in the game who are like that, motivated by extrinsic uh, factors. The most, uh, the goals who go higher are, of course, the, the guys who have that intrinsic need, basically, to push themselves as far as they can. And uh, I believe I had that because I wanted always to, to become better. And uh, I'm not sure I always was successful in that, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, I had that desire to understand better the world that I live in and uh, not only be based on uh, my pure intuition. And uh, I would say that uh, science and the rational world can help you to understand better the world you live in. And even at that early age, and I suppose right throughout your career, it's been that you talk about defeat making you feel physically sick. I think even when you're in that first um, team that you coached, Nancy, I think there was one time where you actually were sick on the way back from a game because you'd lost. Has, wh where did that come from? And Because that, that stayed with you throughout your entire, cause probably still now, isn't it? Well, uh, it was from a very young age. I couldn't uh, take defeat very well. You know, we are, we are all a mixture of uh, uh, 
desire to win and hate to lose. Some of us are a bit more desire to win. Usually the strikers are more uh, the uh, desire to win, the love for, the for winning. The defenders are more hating to lose. And uh, so I was maybe psychologically more defender. And uh, the defeat was at the start. Let's not forget, you know, I, I stopped at uh, the age of 69 and I started at the age of 33 in the top league in France. Mm. And uh, at the start, sometimes I felt I have to stop this job because I'm killing myself. I was physically sick. I had to follow up after defeat. And uh, at the time, I was alone with the team. You had no assistant, no goalkeeper coach. Uh, you were you and the team. And your credibility came from your motivation and the quality of your training sessions, you know. And I had players who were older than I was when I started. And uh, that demanded, of course, a huge commitment. But I adjusted slowly, adapted, because I started at a very young age. Mm -hmm. And uh, But uh, to take the defeat, was always very difficult in, in my head and in my heart. And every big defeat is a scar in your heart forever.